This is Xiaomi's new latest tablet from them. It is called the Xiaomi Pad 6 Pro, the top spec version. Now, it's at the time of this video, only an exclusive Chinese release. I hope it's gonna be global, but we might only see the Xiaomi Pad 6, unfortunately. It's very thin, it's light, it's got a lot of power, great battery life, so many things going for it. So let's find out why I think this model definitely needs a global release. So this unit I got from Giztop and I'm really surprised by their shipping, came with DHL and it only took three days, amazingly quick. So we get this paperwork here that is in Chinese, of course this being the domestic model here, it's not global just yet, I hope it is gonna be global and especially this pro model a 67 watt charger, so it fully charges the tablet in just one hour, and that is their claim, but I get just over that. It's not bad at all for a 8,600 milliamp hour battery, and of course, the cable. So that's what is included. There is no SIM tray tool because there's no SIM support. So I'm really liking the build quality of this Xiaomi Pad 6 Pro. This is a matte finish on the back of it. The metal, the alloy feels really good. The edges aren't too sharp. They're not super rounded off either. And then we've got, of course, our 50 megapixel camera right here. There's a mic on the rear, dual tone LED flash and two megapixel depth camera. So great that it's not a two megapixel macro. That really has no point, but the depth camera is to help out with the portrait shots. So three Pogo port pin connectors right here for the attachable optional keyboard. There's also an optional stylus. Now this review unit did not come from Xiaomi that I've got right here. And unfortunately I don't have the keyboard or the stylus. It just wasn't ready in time. Giztop did not have it. Now I've got some super exciting news that I am so happy about and I'm gonna use it and I have been and that is the Type-C port here. Yes, finally you guessed it. It does support video out. So we don't have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and no micro SD, but we've gained that. Video out and it is USB 3.2. Now it's only the five gigabits per second, but I'll take that over USB 2 speeds any day. Microphone here, we've got two of our loudspeakers and these are Dolby Atmos, they do support Dolby Atmos, the screen also does support Dolby Vision, so you can see on the other side, there they are, and it's marking there the Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos. Now this is not a SIM tray. Sadly, this model, unlike the previous, it does not have SIM support, so no network connectivity with it. And this is a capacitive, always on fingerprint reader slash power button. There is face unlocking with a 20 megapixel camera right here and it does seem to work pretty well. But remember, it's not that secure, but the fingerprint reader is. And this is working really well. So I've enabled through the settings that this to touch it to enable it, which can sometimes trigger some accidental ones, but I simply just tap it and you see, there it goes and unlocks just like that. Now that isn't the fastest I have seen from a fingerprint reader, but it's not bad. I'll do that one more time. So touching it now. All right, that was a lot quicker. That was under a second. And the bezels, they're not, bad at all here with it. Now the tablet is light, it is just 490 grams and the thickness is the best part I think. It is 6.5 millimeters. Now you see up here we have a blank here, now that's not anything, it's not a button, it's not a SIM tray, that's probably where the SIM tray would be if they did have the network support with it. So we've got microphones here and a metal volume and up and down button. Now these buttons do not rattle, they have a very good feel to it, so overall the build quality is excellent from the Xiaomi Pad 6 Pro. Our display here is an IPS. Now 144 hertz is the refresh rate. Now I do have this widget enabled through the developer options because I wanna look at the frame rate and the refresh rate. Now I've been monitoring this and I can happily report here, that yes, it is 144 hertz and it is running at normally 144 frames per second. You see the occasional dip down to like 135 or something like that, but it's normal. That is gonna happen on any tech there. So that is just fine there. Now, looking at the screen, brightness is 450 nits is what I'm measuring. Just over that, they claim it's 550. So I'm not able to quite get that. It could be down to my panel or it could be that I've just, um, up to that result a little bit. That could be also my measuring equipment, but it's good. It's a bright screen, looks great. Now, when you look at it at certain angles, because it's an IPS, you're gonna see this um, slightly darker edges to it. So there is that. Now, if it was OLED or an AMOLED screen, which personally I would have preferred this to have been, it wouldn't have this issue. The colors would be a little bit more uniformed. So what you're looking at is the out of the box here configuration, the colors. So what they do have set is the, the vibrant mode. So I'll just go, sorry, into our 
display settings here and I'll just show you that. So you can see the UI performance is really good. Everything's running fantastic, really, really fast. So it's 128 gigabytes UFS, uh, 3.1 storage and eight gigabytes of RAM that I do have with us, but non-expandable. Now you see here, uh, the different modes we've got. So color scheme, you can adjust that. Oh, it's original color pro that I do have it on, sorry. You've got vivid, uh, then saturated. So if you want something that mimics a little bit like an OLED screen, then just whack it into uh, saturated there. But no, it's a very good screen. I'm happy with it. Now in direct sunlight, you, you'll struggle a little bit with it with that 400 and about 58 or so nits that I'm measuring. It's all right, it's fine. And indoor use, will you probably be using the tablet? No, it's looking really good. Now it does run Android 13 and we have MIUI pad, they call it 14. So this is specific to the tablets. And as I just said before, the performance is excellent. Now I believe, and I've experienced this with all my reviews of Xiaomi products, that the Chinese ROMs seem to just have the best performance. Overall, they really seem to just be a bit faster. They don't show that little spinning icon when you unlock things. It all seems to just pop up really quick there. So you can see there that it's the MIUI pad 14.0.3. There was one update that I'll show you later on for it. And storage, yeah, I don't have an amazing amount. So I'd probably be better off, at least with my own needs, to get the 256 gigabyte model, but no, it's been really quick. Gestures, touch is working quite well. And they do have a few features here that they've customized for tablets. So they've got their kids space, keyboards for tablet you can go through, but I just run Gboard here and floating windows. You can do split screen, all of that good stuff. We do of course have, and well, I'll just go into Chrome here, for example, and then show you like you can set this up as split screen. So you can just hold it here and go, there you go. I want to have it on one side here, then bring up my gallery that's possible. And again, when you're using both of them, at least with Chrome here, because it's reasonably lightweight, it's very fluid. And still we are managing to pump out, yeah, 144 frames per second, although it's just telling me 60 now. It depends on the content. So this here, the album has gone to 60. Oh no, there we go. Since I touched it, it's gone back up to 144. So it is a variable refresh rate, uh, which I will also show you there too. So I forgot to mention that just before about our display. Do apologize for that, very important. So refresh rate override, I always just force it to 144. I want that performance, but this is really good. I'm so happy that I'm sitting here and saying this, look, they have 90 Hertz, the sweet spot. So if you want that battery life, uh, but you don't want to take a huge hit on it, of course, running 144, but you still want things to be smooth. It's definitely 90 Hertz you want to run with this tablet. So the UI, the performance, I'm not really seeing any lag. Everything seems to be great and I'm loving this. I can't believe I'm actually saying this, this MIUI version, this is good. This is very good what I'm seeing out of this Chinese ROM. So it's not global and it doesn't come with Google Play installed, but you can install it yourself. Now the tablet does not have any flicker, it doesn't suffer from that issue. You won't see any banding or any flicker or any problems. You get that with the OLED screens, AMOLED screens, but this is IPS, so we're not suffering from the pulse width modulation issue that some of you do have. The latest patch here, so we have a security patch level of April now, so we are up to date. And here, this is what the ROM is like after you remove all the Chinese bloatware. So yes, there is quite a bit. There's all these different Chinese apps on there, but when you clean it up, um, just remove here. Netflix wasn't there, Amazon Prime Video and Genshin. Those are my own installs there. But once you get rid of that, you are basically bloatware free. I think it's even better here than the global ROMs from Xiaomi that tend to be quite bloated. This doesn't seem to be as bad and a lot of things you can just completely get rid of. So it does have a Widevine level one cert. So this means, well, Netflix is going to be in full HD, Disney Plus, Amazon Prime Video, and Netflix I've been watching a lot of on this tablet because I love the size of it being 11 inches, very comfortable and only 490 grams. It's great, I think, for just media consumption like that. So full HD, but we don't have HDR support. Now this is an HDR10 supporting tablet. It also does have Dolby Vision, uh, but for some reason Netflix is not recognizing that. So maybe that'll be fixed when the global version does come out. I really do hope so. Battery life, phenomenal, super good here. I think it's because of, I don't know, various factors, probably the IPS screen, but more, but probably because of just the optimization of this ROM, really good. And an 8,600 milliamp hour battery is a decent size for an 11 inch tablet. So what I'm looking at is around about nine to 10 hours is what you can squeeze out of this thing. And even just using it over a few days and you use it a few hours every day, the battery drain, the standby battery drain has been excellent, really good. And it drops down a little bit. And when you're watching video, I've been watching a lot of Netflix as mentioned, it really hardly loses anything. So the battery life is 
Great. I only probably need to charge this maybe once every five days or so, and that's using it every day a few hours. Now, stress testing it, this is the 20-minute, very demanding, graphically that is, benchmark that loops and loops from 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme Test. And look at this. It only throttled down, not even 4%. Brilliant. Really good. You see this when you game, and I have my gaming test coming up soon, that the thermals are great, doesn't seem to really throttle at all, and they've done a very good job there with the cooling of the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 with this 11-inch tablet. Now, internal storage, very quick. This is UFS 3.1, so yeah, it's not UFS 4.0, the latest and greatest, uh, but you need the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for that, of course. But these speeds, no one's going to be complaining about them. I mean, look at the random reads and writes. They are very good, and there is no lag coming from this tablet when you're installing or loading your applications, or even just viewing your gallery with a lot of photos and apps and different documents. There's no lag with that at all. So a very respectable, great score here. We are looking at flagship performance still, even though, yes, it's a last-gen chip. So just over a million points here for our AND22 score. That's great. And it only went up 3.9 degrees Celsius, losing 3% battery. Very good result here. A great use of this tablet is this too as well. So eBooks, PDF files. I will just jump into this, uh, which is quite a heavy uh, file here that is running now through this PDF file through Google Books. And you can see here, I'll just dismiss that. It wants me to go over into the night mode. The performance is excellent. Now, this is not still quite iPad level when it comes to heavy PDF files. I don't think they'll ever be able to match that, but it still is really good. It plays a little bit of catch up. So holding it in portrait comfortable, it's only the 400, of course, and 90 grams. And really, I have found it to be a great device here for eBooks uh, and PDFs. So I'll have a look now quickly at an eBook. And this is great. It does look good. The text is sharp. I don't find I really strain my eyes. And do remember that you can invert the text. So you can have the background black, the text white, if you find that a little bit more comfortable. You can put a blue light filter on, and you can also make this all grayscale and just change a few things there to make it even more comfortable. So as an ebook reader, it is fantastic for that. A little bit overkill too with that kind of performance. And for you gamers out there, you've got fantastic performance here with the Xiaomi Pad 6 Pro. It's very good. So I have it on the highest visual settings here, Genshin Impact, and you can see the frame rate, well, it's 60 frames per second, normally solid. I do sometimes see it occasionally dip to 51. 51 or 50 is the lowest that I have seen with this game, which is great. And yes, I do realize I'm not in a super built up area, so it could lag a little bit more. But this is probably one of the best kind of performances you are going to see out of a tablet with this price point here. So great for gamers, great gaming performance, and because of the quad speakers, very immersive, great audio, and just in general, I love gaming on the Xiaomi Pad 6 Pro. And what about our audio? So we have the four speakers on this side, and if you are holding it like so, and you're watching, for example, some YouTube videos, you can accidentally block at least two of those speakers, but I don't find it to be too much of an issue. Now, of course, if you've got a tablet stand, you'll use that, or if you have the keyboard, you can use that instead. And these speakers here, so they are Dolby Audio speakers, the four of them, quite loud, Reasonable amount of bass. Well, just a little bit. Mids are fine. They're actually pretty good speakers for an 11-inch tablet. So I'll give you a sample of them. But just before I do, this is YouTube playback here at uh, 1080p. I've set it to the higher picture quality. In fact, no, that's 4K that it is currently playing right now. And look at it. It's smooth. It's fine. It does not seem to be dropping any frames per second because it's running at 29 to 30 frames per second here. But anyway, here's a sample of the four speakers. So those speakers, they sound really good. Good volume to them. Xiaomi overall, they have done an excellent job with the quad speakers we get with the Pad 6 Pro. And over to the video now, you can expect out of the Xiaomi Pad 6 Pro. So this is the front-facing camera, 1080p, 30 frames per second, or 60 frames per second. Yes, 60 is there. Now, the audio sounds a little bit scratchy. We do have, yet again, that 96 kilobits per second audio bitrate. Uh, they've gone back to that now. 
And then the rear camera, this is our 50 megapixel sensor. You can shoot 4K. Quality doesn't seem to be quite as good as their phones, but for a tablet, it's not too bad here. The focus seems to be fine. No real issues with it. And it does have electronic image stabilization. So just like the front facing camera, you can see that the focus, yeah, no problems with it. So not bad video quality for a tablet. So Xiaomi has done a lot of things right with this model. So first off, I've got to mention it is finally, 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 yes, we have video out via the Type-C port and USB 3.2. It's only five gigabits per second, but hey, I'll take that over USB 2 specs any day. So the screen IPS, it does show a little bit of dark edges around the corners, but overall it's not a bad screen, super responsive to touch and I think most people are gonna be very happy with it. It doesn't have any flickering or any of those problems you get with OLEDs or AMOLEDs, 144 hertz and even a 90 hertz sweet spot option. Performance is fantastic. The Chinese ROM here, while it only has English and Chinese, it's really well optimized. None of that little spinning loading, the UI icons, no, none of that. It's just spot on, performance is great and it seems to be bug free, which is a rarity, especially when I review the global ROMs of MIUI, but no, this one is fantastic. Build quality, fantastic, very good, great loudspeakers, really good performance for gamers out there. And then the loudspeakers, they are also impressive and it will fully charge in just over an hour for me. Around about an hour and eight minutes, we'll charge the 8,600 milliamp hour batteries. It ticks so many boxes, but it's not global, no micro SD card, no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, sadly, and it does not have 5G or 4G support. Pricing of the global version, if we get it, I hope is closer to the Chinese pricing, but it'll likely be quite a bit higher. So thank you so much for watching my review here of this fantastic Android 13 tablet from Xiaomi, the Xiaomi Pad 6 Pro.